Yeah, I'd like to welcome everyone to the 2023-24 season and uh, our first day of training camp. Uh, coming off a real exciting year, coming off a tremendous accomplishment. The guys are uh, refreshed, recharged, uh, excited as we all are uh, to begin the season. We're fortunate to uh, be able to keep our team almost entirely uh, intact, which has been tough for past champions to do. So we're fortunate that we're uh, able to keep our core uh, together. We do have some uh, pending free agents uh, at the end of this coming year. We are hopeful with a bump in the salary cap that we'll be able to keep uh, this core together. Uh, we like our team uh, a lot. With respect to training camp, there's uh, 63 players at camp just on uh, a couple of injury notes. Uh, Late Nahak, uh, who participated in the rookie tournament, uh, is out day to day. He should be able to uh, rejoin shortly. Daniel Miramanov is out uh, long term, uh, coming off an injury from last season. And uh, Robin Leonard remains out indefinitely uh, with hip surgery and will begin the season on uh, LTIR. Just a couple of notes on staffing that uh, most of these were announced uh, during the season. But uh, of course, Ryan Craig has left the, the Golden Knights staff to become the head coach uh, in Henderson. Brent Kissio and Jamie Hewer join him as assistants. Uh, Brent came in from uh, Leftbridge Hurricanes in the Western Hockey League to replace Joel Ward, who was promoted to uh, the Vegas staff to join uh, Bruce Cassidy, John Stevens, uh, Dom Ducharme. Uh, who was brought in, former coach of the Montreal uh, Canadiens, as, as, as well as Sean Burke, our goaltender coach. And then the other person on the ice this morning that you would have seen is Sean Farrell. Uh, Sean had a long uh, history with the St. Louis Blues, and he joins our organization as a skills development coach. His responsibilities will include uh, not only uh, the Golden Knights, but also uh, be involved with uh, with the Silver Knights, so a, a new position for uh, for our organization. Uh, I think those are my thoughts. Just as we open up, uh, I'd pass off to questions. Please uh, wait for the mic just for the benefit of the recording. Ben Goats, Las Vegas Regional. Uh, Kelly, with the group you have returning and you know talking to the guys, seem motivated after a short summer. Do you believe this group is in a position to repeat again next year? Well, there's so many things that have to go right, and and you, uh, uh, you you know what the team looked like the last time you watched on uh, June 13th, and uh, it's a long process to get there. And I know, uh, you know, a year ago it began in training camp. We had a good camp. We did a good job through preseason. We started the season 13 and two. We weathered uh, a lot of injury trouble for uh, a couple of months, and then coming out of the All Star break. Uh, finished tremendously strong. Fortunately, we were playing our best hockey uh, at playoff time. So I've always said that uh, every team runs its own race, and I, uh, I, genu I genuinely uh, believe that from a personnel standpoint, from a roster makeup, from the uh, uh, you know genuine chemistry and care that this uh, team has for each other. Uh, we're you know uh, you know we're excited heading into the season. So are 31 other teams, but uh, I think we've got reason to uh, have uh, have faith in our group and trust uh, trust in the players that we have that we're going to put our best foot forward. Jesse Granger with the Athletic, one of the few possible additions, uh, Max Comtois here on a PTO. What are you hoping to see from him, and what do you think he can possibly bring to the group? Yeah, we haven't been a team that has uh, has used PTOs uh, a lot. Max is. Uh, uh, a young player that's been in one organization throughout his uh, career. Uh, our amateur staff had, um, you know, real uh, good reports on him from his time as a junior. He played on the World Junior Team uh, on uh, on two occasions. Uh, he led Anaheim's team in scoring in the, uh, I guess you'd call it the 2020-21 season. Uh, we were in that division with uh, with the other seven teams. We saw them a lot. I thought he played well uh, against us. His uh, uh, career faded in Anaheim to the point where uh, he wasn't qualified. I think his qualifying offer was over two million dollars, and just one of those uh, situations that uh, you know happens from you know year to year. When you look around the league, there's a there's a guy there that you kind of wonder uh, why he would be, and we uh, we thought he was um, uh, a player worthy to bring in and and, uh, and give a look, and that's uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, Mark Anderson, AP. 
when you look at the two previous teams that repeated Tampa and Pittsburgh, was there anything you, that guided you from their experiences in the, uh, this offseason? Well, Tampa's more recent. They, uh, you know, they, they have done such a good job with uh, um, some tough challenges salary cap wise. They, they've been able to, you know, remain a real uh, competitive team. But I think when you look at, uh, you know, Tampa's championship teams, um, you know, a lot of the things we've talked about with our own team, you know, great, uh, great top end forwards, uh, yeah. really strong uh, on defense. And then, you know, not the same group uh, for each of their two championships, but really well-defined uh, bottom six forwards that, that uh, really uh, helped that team play to an identity. I think that we're constructed uh, in a lot of respects somewhat uh, similarly. Sim similarly. So uh, that's, you know, again, from a roster makeup standpoint, I think we feel comfortable uh, starting off uh, with, uh, with this team. Hey Kelly, uh, Alan Snell with LDSportsBiz.com. Uh, last year's team um, followed a team that didn't make the playoffs and had a, was pretty fresh at the start, also fresh at the end. And I'm wondering, since you played out obviously the string of games uh, to win the cup uh, and a busy off season, what impact do you think will having the shorter off season have on this particular team? Yeah, well, it's a good question and. Uh, you know that's that's part of why some teams maybe have trouble, uh, you know, defending or going back to back with uh, with championships. Um, tremendous energy and excitement around our team right now. I sure don't see anything uh, on the front end where uh, you know I would you know see any you know fall off where we weren't ready or just weren't uh, excited or motivated. I sure think that uh, uh, we'll be good. Uh, that way, as the season goes on, you know it uh, it does become long. But you know, for me, I've always felt if if you play till the end and you win, uh, you don't mind that short summer. If you play to the end and you lose in the final, then the summer does seem short, right? And it seems like you're right back at training camp. You didn't reach your goal that year previous, and now you're back back to work. But I think that uh, you know, winning gives uh, our team. You know, and should give our team confidence that they've uh, been able uh, to do it, and uh, and energy and excitement. And that's, uh, you know, I, I've I've always been such a believer that playoffs make your players better. And when I look at uh, as we sit here today, if I go back uh, 12 months, uh, you know, I could name a handful of players um, that you know are much better players uh, today than they were as we started last season. And uh, you know. First among them would be Jack Eichel. So, uh, you know, you've got uh, the growth in the game of a Will Carrier, of a Nicholas Haig, of a Zach Whitecloud. Playoffs make you better, and and that's uh, you know for me something that I've seen uh, you know throughout my career is those teams that get good playoff runs. It helps uh, it helps players improve and develop uh, to a better level. Hey Kelly, Chris Golick, Vegas Hockey. Now, can you speak to the confidence? in the goaltender position in the events Logan Thompson or Aiden Hill have to miss an extended period of time this season? Yeah, and goaltender injuries, not just uh, in Vegas, where certainly last year it impacted us. And it was interesting last year, we had no goaltender injuries for you know 54 or 55 games, whatever uh, it was. And then we had uh, a number of them. If you go across the NHL, it was a real uh, challenge for teams last year with goaltender injuries. Uh, you know, this year we've got uh, you know, Logan and Aiden uh, coming into camp uh, healthy, feeling at the top of their game. We did get a chance because of injuries to evaluate Yuri Patera last year in NHL games. Of course, you get to see uh, the players in the American Hockey League, but but you know when you when you get a chance, you know whether it was Pavel Dorfey of last year, Caden Korzak, Braden Bahal, the guys that get to come up and play NHL games, you know really uh, helps to paint a picture in your mind of what uh, their capabilities or potential might be. And I think we liked what we saw. Uh, with Yuri, so he's the number three goaltender in our situation. If we had an in, in our in our organization, if we had an injury, he'd be uh, he'd be called on. Ben Goats, Las Vegas Regional. Uh, Kelly, you mentioned a bunch of the players that are free agents next off season, like 
Marcia So Stevenson, I think Martinez. Um, are there any active discussions with those guys right now? Are you hoping to get a couple deals done before the end of camp? Yeah, and it's it's the policy we've always had, Ben. We're not going to talk about contracts unless we've got a contract to tell you about. So that's uh, that's how we'll handle it. And uh, you know, there's others uh, in addition to the to the ones that uh, that you mentioned. And you know, as I mentioned in my opening uh, comments, we're uh, you know looking to keep this team together uh, as as best we possibly can. Hey Kelly, Vince Sapienza, Fox 5 here in Las Vegas. I know we're looking ahead to this season, but I just kind of want to go back for you personally, your day with the Cup. I know you went back to Brandon. Can you just tell us about that day and if there was a memory that sticks out maybe more than the rest? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good question, Vince. Uh, it, was, it was a really memorable summer. Uh, before I get to my own day, I would tell you, likely uh, uh, similar to many of you, I really enjoyed watching it uh, make the rounds uh, with our team. And uh, I was able to be at Zach Whitecloud's day, which was uh, really unique, uh, really special. I enjoyed watching or paying attention or just talking with our players. You know, some players went to other players' uh, cup day, which, uh, which I think is uh, pretty cool. I saw the cup keepers at uh, Zach Whitecloud's uh, event, and uh, they talked about, you know, just the different... Uh, you know, experiences that the players wanted. They uh, had come from Will Carriers. All he wanted to do was fish. And uh, they said he was on the water for like five hours. His wife was waiting for them. They had the other events planned and he just wanted to fish. So that's, uh, that's kind of neat when you, uh, when you hear everybody's day. Uh, personally, it was, uh, um, it was, it was fantastic. And, and we uh, wanted to do it in Brandon. I wanted to do something for the community because of course uh, I'd worked there for, uh, 27 years we had a public uh, event at the uh, Keystone Center which is the facility where the hockey team plays they had I think between 2,000 and 2,500 people that came uh, to get their pictures with the cup get autographs and that uh, that type of thing uh, we then uh, touched uh, a few businesses in town that have been good to uh, my family over uh, the years and then we had a private event at our house uh, in the evening probably 50 or 60 people that uh, that would have been uh, would have been there, so that was uh, that was awesome. We got a bit of a an opportunity uh, three days later to uh, the cup was sort of in a travel day where they could carve out a little bit of time. We were able to take it to uh, our cottage, which is at uh, uh, Clear Lake, Manitoba, and get some great pictures from some of the you know the, the beautiful areas that uh, that they have there. <clears throat> so it was uh, it was really neat. You know, it's neat to see the names on the cup. Uh, one of the things that uh, I really enjoyed was when you when you step back and you don't look at the cup, but you look at the people that are coming up to it. It's it's just incredible what a magnet it is, and uh, you know it. Uh, you know we took it to the marina at the lake, for example, and and you know people just uh, just flock to it. It really is a, a historic uh, special trophy. You know the other thing that was. Uh, uh, interesting. I don't know if any of you guys have talked to cup keepers. Uh, those guys have great stories to tell. They uh, they have pretty neat jobs. There's five of them. You you get two of them uh, that go with each event. I think they kind of work 10 or 12 days. Then they they rotate guys through, and and uh, you know they have uh, really neat stories. I know things about the Stanley Cup now that I uh, that I didn't know. Our uh, team will be on there. I think they say for 63 years because as the rings fill up, when it gets full, they take the top one off. And then, uh, you know, so the trophy's always 36 inches high. That doesn't change. It always weighs uh, the same amount that it does. There's still the Montreal Maroons, I believe, engraved on the inside of the cup. I knew none of those, uh, none of those things, even uh, being a uh, proud Canadian that should know that stuff. I never, uh, I never knew any of that. So that stuff is really uh, uh, kind of neat. But yeah, it's a, you know, it's a, you hope it's not a once in a lifetime opportunity, but uh, certainly uh, you appreciate it when uh, when you do get your chance. We'll do uh, two more before we go to practice. So we'll put uh, Ryan and uh, Ryan Wallace, Fox Sports, Las Vegas. A along those lines, the decision to get the cup engraved before the player tour that's unique. Um, kind of what led to that decision making, and also do you remember where you were when you saw your name on the cup for the first time? Um, <clears throat> It, it just it, it seemed uh, to me for the players when they had their cup day 
part of what would make it cool is they they can put their finger on their name, right? And the people that come to their uh, celebration uh, can look at the team. So uh, I wasn't aware that teams waited till fall. Traditionally, that's that's when it's always been, and I, I think we we're the first team to do it prior to the uh, to the tour. And uh, it likely cost us a few days on the front end. I think it went from Nashville to Montreal, and and uh, you know, and even this lady that does the engraving is uh, is a uh, you know a really neat story. Uh, what uh, what her background is, so uh, yeah, it uh, it made it more meaningful in in, uh, in my opinion. To your second question, uh, I believe that uh, I think Nate uh, sent out a shot maybe from. Uh, uh, Phil uh, Pritchard. I mean, he might have been whoever was the. It's kind of first showed up on uh, on Twitter. Nate sent uh, something out to to George and I uh, just to see if we had uh, had seen it. So yeah, it was uh, you know pretty cool feeling. Hi Kelly, uh, Alan Snow with LV Sports Biz. Um, you, know, you assembled a roster that was really had a hallmark of depth, and I'm wondering uh, what kind of I uh, what kind of players are you are you kind of keeping an eye on from Henderson who you think could make their mark uh, of the new season. Yeah, and last year we had a, a few guys roll through, right? So when you look at the, you know, the rookie tournament, you know, Brennan Brisson, I think, is, uh, you know, knocking on the door. I think Caden Korzak, I liked Leighton Ahak's uh, tournament prior to, uh, you know, him getting in, uh, injured. It, it's, uh, you know, the year-over-year -year, uh, growth is what you want, and, and you know, I use Zach Whitecloud and Nick Haig. They played two full years uh, in the American Hockey League. They're both really good NHL uh, players. Nick Waugh played two full years in the American Hockey League. He's a good NHL player. Mark Stone is a pretty good NHL player. Played two years uh, in the uh, uh, American Hockey League. So it's a great development league. Um, you know, part of us having Ryan Craig there is the importance we place on the, the development uh, of those players. So, yeah, there's going to be there's going to be different guys that work their way, uh, you know, uh, you know, getting closer and, and breaking through. Um, when you speak to the depth of our team, um, I think that was really important. And and you, you know, everybody, you know, you naturally look at you know, the star players on our team. So, you know, Mark Stone, you know, Jack Eichel, Marshy, uh, Alex Petrangelo. But when you look at, at uh, you know, when you look at the players on our team that were sort of, you know, $3 million and under, you know, so you start with Nick Waugh, when you, when you look at all those players and you evaluate the contribution they made to us winning the Stanley Cup, for me, it was uh, it was the difference. That's uh, that's how I feel. It was it was the difference in why uh, we won, and those uh, those players did such uh, such a great job. So, uh, you know, that's uh, that's that's what we look for, I guess. And you know, some of the players that come up from the American League are gonna, you know, have different skill sets. They might be top six forwards, but in terms of the depth piece, that's uh, that's sort of what you look for.